and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Pierre Andriani, Design Studio Solutions Specialist for Autodesk. Today I'm going to talk about the History Visualizer. As its name indicates, it helps you to visualize history. In uh, 2024 and above versions, it's under Windows uh, History Visualizer. Uh, if you use 2021 to 2023, it would be under Windows Information Window History Visualizer. If you can't find it, what you can do also is go to Tool Locator and type in History Visualizer. And here it shows you uh, all the recent files I've uh, used uh, to do this demo. Or if I back up a little bit and here it shows you it's under Menu Windows History Visualizer. Okay. So right now it looks like this, and since there's no construction history to display, it's empty. I also want to show you, uh, pay, make you pay attention to the top right corner in here. Uh, right now there's not a whole lot, but now if I actually going to create a fillet, a surface fillet, let's make it, uh, I don't know, 10. Uh, sure, curvature, why not? And now I'm going to say let's do a curvature fillet. Also, I want you to remember we have a, a pink set of surfaces and a yellow set of surfaces. So let's go ahead and build. And once that built, you can see on top you have an H, meaning there's history. If I click on that H, now there's a couple of commands, suspend, history view, and most importantly, visualizer. So that's another way to access the visualizer instead of the window. Okay. Uh, on the top, there are ways to filter the visualizers. So right now it's showing me everything. It can also use by picked or use by layer. So again, since this is not assigned to a specific layer, it's not showing me anything. So I'm just going to show all for now. And uh, if you look at the way the uh, surface fillet is built, we have the pink outputs over here and then the yellow, I'm sorry, the pink inputs, I should say, on top and then the yellow here. So meaning that the surface fillet is built by those inputs in yellow, those input in pink, okay? Pick nothing and everything goes away. Well, this goes away. All right, now, if I want to analyze this, if I want to query edit this, I can actually just double click on it and then it'll come back to the surface fillet control, which is handy. Other things you can do, you can click on the arrow and then you collapse uh, the visualizer itself. It is helpful if you have a huge uh, file. So that's always nice. So collapse, now I know that my pink on the top and yellow inputs on the bottom. Okay. So, okay, great, this is the fillet, big deal, right? But now if I go to example two, actually example three, sorry. So now let's say I wanna change the inputs here from uh, from this dead straight to maybe a little angled. And here I have my uh, yellow and pink inputs and we said that the yellow ones are at the bottom if I recall. Okay, if I click here, or if I click on those highlights as yellows, I can say replace multiple and then I can highlight the two new ones. Say build and now the fillet has jumped from the straight one to the angled one. And that's just by replacing the inputs. Uh, if I can go back, if I click on here and say replace multiple, like those two, and then the fillet jumps back to where it was before. So again, that's uh, very handy. It, if you have a uh, cascading events, it will be even more handy. I'll show you that in the next example. So now if I turn on this example number two, and I could probably turn this uh, to make those invisible, so again, if I recall, double click on the tool. So the pink ones are on top. Good. All right. So what if I said I want to replace, what if I want to make this fillet jump to here? Well, I can say, well, on the pink inputs, because uh, they replace multiple, pick those two, I say go. All oh, right, now you get a warning because it cannot build the fillet because obviously it's trying to build from here to here and it's not going to happen. So if I pick on the pink inputs and say replace multiple, actually on the yellow inputs, replace multiple, click those two. So now the fillet has jumped from here to here and just by using the history visualizer. Let's show you another example. So here I have a, a chrome piece that's here and it has a few things going on. So overall it's a railed 
suction front to back and it also has some trim curves meaning that I have a trim here and I have uh, on the side view I have a double trim here and a trim on the side view here so there's quite a few operations involved so what if I said I want to change this section from this original section that's full to a notch section in red so I can see it so instead of again undoing everything redoing rebuilding retrimming what if I go to my visualizer and have a look so here this is how the seal section is itself constructed and here I have my rail section with the input of uh, the curve and the rail so here it's railed and it's railed over there from this section so the end section is railed over and over and so on and so forth so here but if I said I just want to switch this section from the, uh, the this dark blue here to this red one here if I find where it is in my history visualizer so it's actually here see I can highlight it right there so all right let's replace this line here and let's replace it with that line but then all the operations below are still kept so I'm railing everything Peace. and I'm also cutting in this view cutting in that view and trimming in this view so all the operations that make this um, piece possible are carried over which is uh, kind of nice and again if I want to revert to my previous seal I can say is replace this line here with that one and back to where I was so again in a cascading uh, operations and if you have a lot of operations involved the visualizer can help you get to your new surface without having to cut and redo and retrim everything again if we show some you know cascading operations and little things that you can actually use to your advantage so here I'm actually using the uh, patch precision itself and I'm using the parameters of the surface itself to build this so if you look at the visualizer which will be pretty simple so I have the surface and then I have a draft and then I have a fillet but if we look at the uh, the way this draft is done it's drafting off the u equals one of this bottom surface and then the fillet is done once both surfaces are created so what if I change the parameter of the input if I change this let's say I'm gonna move it to back here and say go so then again everything behind it changes so I moved the um, parameter from 1 to 0.556 and then the draft fault drafted out the 0.556 parameter and then the same fillet came back so here if I untrim this object I can again change this from where I was over here to move it back to over here somewhere and again it's just this cascading effect from one to the other just with this the usage of this uh, parameter here and I can always uh, go back to one where I had it before replace to u equals one here and that's where I had it before so again a draft a fillet all being used with a parameter and this one parameter drives this uh, little surface here which is uh, kind of cool okay now we get into the more complicated uh, application of the uh, history visualizer so here what i have is a surface in the back you can see it here and this surface is actually do a driving an array so the array if you look at it my surface array so it goes you know from the top it scales down to 0.65 and i can actually you know move the parameters to change the array itself you know you can start and this array whichever you like so if you do a grill for example in this case which is nice and again i can go to my visualizer right now there's everything uh, so if i say uh, let's frame all this fit in window there we go so now it's the surface array is driven using this input and 
The key to remember when you use the uh, history visualizer is to have you know one to one input. So if I have a cube on input, if I have a node as an input, you need a node as a replacement node, if that makes sense. If you have, a, for example, a draft driven by curves, by three curves, you want a draft. If you change the draft, you want the same amount of curves to uh, replace your item. So here, I'm gonna turn my options on. So here I have different options uh, to do this grill. And they're gonna be like for like. So here, this is the cube here. I uh, click it, this is the cube. But if I say replace the node, so I'm at the node level. Replace this node with this one and then you'll see it recalculates the actual surface using a different node. So here, another example where I actually have a, a filleted node, but again, if I do a like for like replacement, then there's no problem. So here I have a grill with a filleted node, which is kind of nice. Well, and one last example, let's say I have this uh, seat pack right here and new information i have a new design and then i need to have a bigger opening like this one here so what i can do is go to my visualizer and then i can say all right if wow well, can i change the input so if i pick on my yellow inputs replace multiple and then i can say please replace with those contiguous g1 say accept and uh, it looks a little messy, but here, let's just template that and reassign this here. So voila, so now my seat pack is a lot bigger and I just had to replace the inputs one-to-one -one for the draft. So my previous opening was that one and now the new one is right there. So again, that's uh, one example on how to use the history visualizer. Thank you for watching and catch you next time.